All right, Dank Fam, today we are going to be learning about all the different stunt trick names that there are and telling you guys exactly what they mean and what they look like. That way, when you see a stunt video, you can name off tricks properly. Let's get it. All righty, people. Don't really have a clear head today. I'm feeling sick. I was on YouTube looking up like a morning stretch routine to get some energy, and a lot of it had to do with deep inhales and long exhales. But the chick on there was inhaling longer than I could. And I started to get a little offended. Like, the average person can't be inhaling as long as you are, lady. Like, do some shorter ones. Or maybe I'm just tripping, I don't know. guys <clears throat> everybody left a lot I got more friends coming but until then I'm riding solo so if I hurt myself you guys need to tell somebody because nobody's spectating right now besides you guys so you need to tell somebody let's talk about some terms guys you guys see all these stunts online people talking about it and you might be getting into stunning learning all these tricks and saying them wrong or you just simply might want to know what a trick's called because you've seen people doing it. You hear about all these different tricks. You got staggered wheelies, foot in the hole wheelie. You got a sit down wheelie, spreader wheelies, high chair wheelies, all different types of wheelies. And the name alone, a lot of you guys probably don't know what the names mean. So I'm gonna dumb down this video a little bit for you guys and talk about the basics of stunt riding, which is knowing what the trick is. The first trick that most people try or learn is a sit down wheelie. Anybody can try these on their bikes. So it's usually the first thing that people like to learn. So a sit down wheelie is exactly how it sounds. You're sitting in the seat and you're just popping the clutch or just gassing the throttle and you're staying in the seat the whole time while you pop up. So we're gonna try it real quick. I love this view, but it's challenging. Now the thing with sit down wheelies is that they're the easiest wheelie to somewhat pop in a sense because you're sitting down naturally how you would be riding the bike and then sometimes you accidentally gas it too hard and the wheel comes up so sit down wheelies are a very easy wheelie to do but as far as mastering them into circle wheelies and no handers and everything else um, it's a little bit more complicated than a traditional wheelie that a lot of stunners start out with like a seat standard so a seat standard just like it is in the name both feet are on the seat and you just pop it up and keep your feet remaining on the seat. So I'm standing up and you got a lot more room to do stuff as far as like dipping into circles because you're over top of the bike versus sit down where you're inside of the bike. The seat stander allows you to be over top of the bike or you can be further back. So you have a lot more movement with your body to control the bike better. So myself personally, um, when I started doing uh, straight line wheelies, I sucked for so long with doing wheelies. But I started trying sit down wheelies first because that's what I naturally started to do on my stock bikes. But I didn't have much luck with the sit down wheelies. So I went ahead and started trying seat standers. Like, and like I was saying, seat standers are a lot more comfortable as a newer rider to get acquainted with the bike and as far as the movements and stuff like that. And the one downside, but also a good side with seat standers is that the bike likes to move really easily as far as steering around and getting wobbly and everything else. But that's also good because as you start to have these, um, that's also good though because as you start to have the bike steer around and wobble this, that, and the other, you're gonna crash maybe, but you're also gonna get used to dealing with that, that looseness of the bike and it's gonna be more and more natural over time. All stunt riding is for me is muscle memory. 
I can naturally say I've learned these tricks. Oh, look, we got a cop. That's cool. I can naturally say I've learned these tricks. Um, and there's like a, a, a technique and a method to it. But naturally, it's just muscle memory more than anything. What I'm doing here is repeating a trick over and over and over again until I get it down pat in my brain. So my mind might not even, my mind might not even be telling my body what to do, but my brain has done it so many times that I can do it without even thinking about what I'm doing. I hope this cop's not uh, here to weigh in on our parade. We've had cops come out here before, but they're usually pretty chill. Shout out to Sarasota. So when I first started stunning, I tried to sit down with these, didn't have much luck with them. So I started getting good at burnouts and everything else because burnouts were a really simple trick to learn, um, but I didn't get much excitement out of it. You know, like my name was Dank Willie for so long and all I was doing burnouts. So I was destined to try to figure out how to wheelie and circle wheelies was the biggest goal of mine for so, so long. I did seat sander wheelies for a long time, but like I was telling you guys, I couldn't keep the bike to stay sturdy enough to cut into some smooth circles that were controlled. Anytime I would circle wheelie for the first time in a seat stander, it was pure luck in a sense. I would let the bike dip and that dip was so uncomfortable that as soon as that dip would start, I would just hang on for dear life. Um, so I started a new technique, which was foot in the seat. So you got one foot in the seat, and depending on which way that you're circling, I like to circle to the left, so my left foot is on the left peg. So when you clutch up like this, it's a little bit trickier to stay straight since one part of your body is hanging off one more, since one more, yeah, since one part of your body is hanging off majority of one side. Um, but the cool part about it is, if you're doing circle wheelies, you can use this foot in the seat as like a pivot point and turn your foot and just cut it as soon as you want. So I can pull out of a circle wheelie, go straight line again, and then cut it any point I want just because this is my sweet spot. I use that foot to just kind of pivot a little bit. So you'll see this, you'll see a lot of stunt riders, they have a certain go-to spot that they like to, uh, they have a certain go-to trick that they like to do. And a uh, foot in the seat is my favorite just because I've done it so long and so often and that was the first first uh, style of wheelie that I learned how to circle wheelie so it's the most comfortable for me and then death spins I love death spins because when I started to circle wheelie I used to have the idle way too high and um, naturally if you cut into a circle wheelie with the idle too high it's gonna just bring the bike up way too high like this So that was a death spin right there, a really bad one because I was trying to show you guys in a slower fashion, in a slower fashion, but uh, I'm like all over the place trying to talk here. But I learned death spins through trial and error of just um, not hitting the brake or the clutch at the right time. And then I slowly turned it into a wheelie. So this is it right here. Clutch in, tap foot, pop clutch as soon as you get your foot off the ground. And your foot, you're pivoting your foot in order to get the bike to turn even more. Sometimes you'll go into a death spin and not even have momentum and you just push your foot to do all the work for you. And there's a, a thing with stunt riding guys is you're gonna plateau, you're gonna get a bag of tricks and you're gonna do that bag of tricks till you're perfect at them. And then you get to the point where you're like, man, what else do I learn? And um, for me, just recently over the past year, foot brake has been my newest addiction because it changes the game completely. I've been a handbrake god for so long, but if you really want some street cred from the OGs, you learn that foot brake. But then look at this. The time I finally took my hand off the handbrake and I'm like, yeah, it's just amazing. But then once you uh, get used to that foot brake, take your hand off the throttle and then you can mix it in with some handbrake tricks. I'm not gonna lie, people. I'm making this video because I need to make a daily upload. But at least you guys can get a little bit of a history behind my process to learn and start riding. But I guarantee you, there's very rare amount of people that I meet that have a slower learning curve than I did. All it is is seat time. I don't want to ride right now. My friends aren't even here yet, but I have you guys to entertain and make this video for. So I'm pulling shit out of my ass. So I told you guys about sit down wheelies, seat standers, and foot in the seat. But another trick that you guys hear about is called coaster wheelies. 
and coaster wheelies, you're just coasting. So what you do in a coaster is any trick you want to do in a wheelie, but you pull the clutch in and let the, the bike's balance point carry the wheelie. You're not using power, you're not using brakes, you're just letting the clutch get pulled in and letting the bike coast. And you use brakes. I personally rub the foot brake while I'm doing my coaster wheelies. I haven't experimented with handbrake coasters yet, but I personally just cover the foot brake with my coaster wheelies and you can feel the bike kind of chomp a little bit when you're when you're rubbing the foot brake a little too much for it. Now we're gonna pull the clutch in now and we're just coasting. But this is a brand new tire so my bike doesn't like to stay still but you get the point. Sit down wheelie coaster no sound. And the cool thing is you can use coaster and clutch work and revs and all that stuff inside of your circle wheelies and just give yourself a little bit more flavor. So same concept, if you're about to do a death spin, you got the clutch pulled in anyways. So during that break where the clutch is pulled and your foot's tapping the ground, give it a little rev mid rotation, but do it a little slower than normal. You don't have to get spicy with it and just get the slow um, basics down before you start going crazy. So this is a little example. We're going, getting ready. I'm going a little wider and lower. As soon as I'm ready, blip the throttle. And just rev it up a little bit. All right, a little quicker idea here. We're going, going, going. Pull the clutch in, rev. That's it. The biggest thing that matters with coaster wheelies is if you're in a coaster wheelie, no matter what the case, you never want to pop the clutch if your revs haven't settled yet. You always want to go for the brake. So what that means, if I pop it up, that's a better option. Just hit the brake and slam her down versus popping the clutch while it's mid rev because that's going to make you backflip. And a lot of tricks I learned on a Grom before I brought it over a big bike. And a coaster wheelie is one of those tricks that are really great to learn on a Grom because these big bikes will do a backflip. But the Groms, even though they'll do a backflip, they're a lot more lenient as far as snapping the clutch and pulling it in and popping it at the wrong times when you're learning coaster wheelies. So if you got a friend that's got a Grom and you don't mind slinging, hop on that thing and try some coasters. <laughs> I want anybody that's watching my channel right now to never call a wheelie a splitter wheelie. And what a splitter wheelie is, I think a lot of people are confused with, is when your feet are on the tank doing a split. This is not a splitter wheelie, this is a spreader wheelie because your legs are spread across. And I'm gonna do one for you. Splitter wheelies, woo! Nah, they're spreaders. You don't have to comment and tell me if you've been calling them splitter wheelies all this time, but I've had like a couple people tell me about it, like close friends of mine too, and I'm like, bro, you're embarrassing me. So this is a high chair. Both feet are over the handlebars, just like a high chair. Same concept, pop clutch and ride her out. And if you smack the tail on the ground, that's gonna be a scrape of whatever you're doing. Let's see if I can pull out of this new tank I got. Wow, that thing pulls out so nice. Tang did a damn good job on this thing, people. I don't really have a reason why I breathe so heavy when I'm stunning guys, but uh, my theory is I would be dead and breathing by now if I wasn't talking to you guys. So I think talking during these sessions give me more energy because I'm simply having to breathe. I don't breathe when I ride, generally. <laughs> Who knows? That light is bright. Oh, I got a figure eight on the new tire, people! Not really, but I'll take it. That was the biggest thing I was scared of. I was riding the corded tire for the Santa video and stuff, just for the simple fact that that tire is so broken in, it did exactly what I wanted it to. But now we got a 180 instead of a 190. It's a Pirelli, so I'm all over the place. So I got you guys on the spreader wheelies, not splitter wheelies, and the high chair wheelies. A double back pegger. <laughs> I guess someone wants to see it, so we'll show you what a double back pegger is. Luckily, there's no third person shots. Double back pegger is a despised wheelie, but this is like one of the OG wheelies. No, no brakes with a stock bike, because both feet are on the back passenger pegs. And you just gas it, or and then you just pop clutch and bring it up. Woo! Let me get a good one for you. 
So here's a double back pegger wheelie. The, the community's favorite, might I add. You got them legs spread nice and wide, baby. Woo! But you see, I'm just getting nasty with it, slinging her all around. Low key, everybody hates double back peg wheelies. My opinion, I don't like doing them just because they, they look ugly. Your legs are just spread out, you got your booty sticking out. I got no ass, so it's just not a good look for me. But uh, double back peggers are a really easy trick to learn. Um, I don't have no hate against you if that's what you learn how to wheelie. But once you put your foot in that hole um, versus a double back pegger, I think it's gonna start cutting like crazy. Because you might see some people doing double back pegger wheelies and their body is just shaking all over. They're shaking their ass all around like they're trying to make a buck. But that's just because their body's like a kite and they're just like whipping the bike around all over the place. But uh, the key with stunning is to stay nice and tight with the bike, but still loose. And uh, the, less, the less distance you have with the bike, the more it's going to move around with you more uh, consistently. So I'll show you guys one of my new tricks I just learned uh, a couple weeks ago jump to 50 50 which is like one of those sweet ass ninja tricks i've seen online for years and i finally got the balls to do it Woo! i gotta get better with them heel clickers it's just sad the drz boys have arrived My man, what's happening? I'm out here teaching YouTube about all the different stunt trick names. We're not gonna have anybody on YouTube ever saying splitter wheelies again. What's happening? <laughs> what? They all left. They're on Groms, you know, bedtime.